ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا ما يهدي الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله in the all praise due to allah we praise him and we seek his help and his forgiveness we seek refuge with allah from our soul's evils and our wrong actions whom so ever allah guides none can misguide and whomsoever Allah leaves astray, none can guide. I bear witness and testify that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah. And I bear witness and testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the final messenger of Allah. My dear brothers in Islam, a hadith which is reported in Sahih Muslim, our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he said, إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ قَدْ يَأِسَ أَنْ يَعْبُدَهُ الْمُصَلُّونَ فِي جَزِيرَةِ الْعَرَبِ وَلَكِنْ فِي تَحْرِيشِ بَيْنَهُمْ Shaytan has given up hope to ever be worshipped uh, in to, uh, the Arabian Peninsula. And what is meant here in the Arabian Peninsula is it is referring to the Muslims because the Muslims were pagans once upon a time. Shaytan has given up hope to be ever to be worshipped, idolatry will not come back to the Ummah. So the Muslim Ummah is not going to revert back to idolatry as a whole. So what's going to happen? وَلَكِنْ فِي تَحْرِيشِ بَيْنَهُمْ Shaitan will cause division, will incite hatred between the, the Muslims. And as a majority Ummah, as a majority ummah, the mainstream Muslims will, 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 shall never revert back to idolatry. And this is a prediction, as Imam al Nawawi and others have said, it is a prediction that has been, has born true throughout all Islamic lands. Never has any religion spread so fast so quickly, so permanently like Islam has. Never has masses of people embraced a new faith and remained firm on that faith from Kazakhstan all the way to Al-Andalus, from the lands of India and Afghanistan all the way down south to Africa, throughout these regions, wherever Islam spread, it remained up until this day, except politics kicked it out like in Al-Andalus. Otherwise, wherever Islam spread, it remained firm. So what is plan B for shaitan? If shaitan cannot get you to worship an idol, to commit shirk, what is plan B for shaitan? He has decided the next biggest thing that he can succeed in is to disunite, is to cause divisions, is to incite hatred. So number two on the list, Worse than many of the major sins when the ummah is divided. Because a major sin is between you and Allah. But when the ummah is divided, the ummah becomes weak and the whole ummah will suffer. So when the ummah is disunited, then we collectively become weak. So if shaitan cannot get you to worship an idol, he will cause division amongst the Muslims and he has succeeded in that. So... This shows us many things, my dear brothers. First and foremost, it shows us that shaitan is an active enemy. He is, he is not a passive enemy. Shaitan is assessing. Shaitan is re-evaluating the next strategy. Shaitan tried to get the early Muslims to go back to idolatry with the, 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 the apostasy, the, the, yani the apostasy wars in the reign of Abu Bakr and the Muslims, alhamdulillah, were successful and they defeated the apostates and idolatry was permanently wiped out as it was predicted by our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So what did this evil entity shaitan do? He decided, if I cannot get them to worship an idol, I will make sure that every group is bickering with one another. Every person has problems with one another. Every society, every community is going to be at odds with, with one another. And if I can reach that level, then I am satisfied. So our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam being the loving prophet that he is is warning us O muslims be careful don't let shaitan succeed in this plot so these so what are some of the ways that shaitan will do this 
First and foremost, my dear brothers, and it is the worst of them, and it is the most disgusting of them, and it is the most vile of them, it is to cause divisions based on imaginary differences, not even real. For example, the color of your skin, differences of caste, differences of tribalism, differences of ethnic origin, differences of nation state, all of these differences is man-made and superficial all of these differences mean nothing in the sight of Allah who cares where you come from who cares where your parents came from and at the end of the day my dear brothers it is your piety that matters the most honorable amongst you are those who have taqwa so shaitan comes along and he raises and he tells us uh, yani, uh, and we raise our children in a certain way be careful of, of so and so be careful of that group be careful of those people with that certain skin color the shaitan raises us in he, the shaitan yani, he comes to us and he whispers these thoughts and we raise our children in that way and then we start to think that we are better and this my dear brothers is, is one of the worst sins and we start to think that we are better that our, our nation state is better our race is better and so on and so forth and we start to say all Bengalis are like this and all Pakistanis are like that and all Lebanese people are like that we start to feel that we are better than the other uh, ethnic uh, yani, uh, people of different ethnicities therefore this my dear brothers is from shaitan this is from shaitan be careful my dear brothers remember the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Abu Dhar you still have jahiliya in you you should have not said this to Bilal we know Abu Dhar he said something which he should not have said to Bilal and he said you still have jahiliya in you and he immediately apologized to Bilal because Bilal was a black man he was a black man remember our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said tribalism leave it for it is rotten it is infested number two second way shaitan comes to us that if he cannot succeed at the tribal level if he cannot succeed at the community level he will go down to the individual level he will make sure the brother does not speak to his brother cousin does not speak to his cousin friend does not speak to his friend anytime that you had a good relationship with someone and you no longer have that relationship know that shaitan has succeeded know that shaitan has succeeded realize oh muslims one of the most evil tactics of shaitan is rumor mongering slandering and gossiping why because it breaks the bonds of society when prophet yusuf السلام, had issues with his brothers at the end of the story when they reconciled what did yusuf say, say? what did yusuf السلام, say shaitan has caused this evil between me and my brothers he blamed shaitan even though his brothers did these things but he blamed shaitan for causing these whisperings and causing division between him and his brothers so so you always my dear brothers have to be the better of the two number three the third tactic of shaitan this is the last point that i'm going to make is that if he cannot get you at the community level or the individual level he will cause spousal he will cause division between the husband and wife and it is this is one of the worst of the worst in authentic hadith found in sahih muslim that shaitan he calls the other shayateen and he asks them what did you do what what fitna did you cause today and they, they will also all say i did this and i did that and he trivializes what they did and then one shaitan comes and he says i caused dashar i caused divorce between a husband and a wife and then he honors that shaitan because when you break families when you break uh, couples and families what happens you also destroy societies my dear brothers this is the essence of tahrish of breaking up the bonds of something so trivial causing a marriage to end that was not uh, legitimate therefore my dear brothers th these are the three ways shaitan will come and cause division amongst us number one the community level a tribe or a nation number two the individual level family and friends and how many of us 
Don't talk to our family members. How many of us aren't talking to our family members? We're upset from our family members. We haven't spoken to our brothers and sisters for years. How many, how many of us are in that position, my dear brothers? Therefore, fear Allah. And number three, at the spousal level, realize that shaitan is attacking all of these bonds. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fa ya fawzul mustaghfirin. Astaghfirullah. Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. My dear brothers in Islam, what are some of the ways we can counter the tactics of shaitan? Three things. What we say and what we hear are the two main sources of tension between any two people. So we have to be very vigilant about what we say and ignore much of what we hear. Very important. We have to be vigilant of what we say and ignore of much what we hear. In fact, Allah Azza wa Jal, He explicitly links breaking of the bond with what the tongue says. وَكُلِّ عِبَادِ يَكُولُ الَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانِ يَنْزَقُ بَيْنَهُمْ Tell my servants that they shall speak, they shall, that, that they shall always speak good speech. Tell my servants that they, their speech should be noble. Their speech should not have bickering, slandering, backbiting, putting people down, making fun of others. Therefore, we need to monitor what we say and ignore much of what we hear because we're going to hear so much and therefore we need to ignore a lot of what we hear. Number two is to make dua to Allah, to have a qalb salim, a pure heart. We don't want a heart full of jealousy, full of enmity, full of hatred. Envy, we don't want that kind of heart. We want a pure heart. We want a heart that is qalb salim. And this is this dua we should make. And this is the dua Ibrahim alayhi salam. He is praising the Quran because of this. If, if jaa rabbahu bi qalbin salim, Ibrahim alayhi salam came to Allah with a qalb salim. We should make dua to Allah to grant us a good heart, a pure heart, a sound heart. This is very, very important, my Dear brothers, عباد الله إن الله بدأ بنفس ثم ثنى بملائكة قدس فقال ولم يزل قائلا إن الله وملائكة يصلون على النبي أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلم تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد الله الله مغفر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعاء ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا إننا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لا نكوننا من الخاسرين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة في الآخرة حسن وقنا عذاب النار وأقيم الصلاة